Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 410. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about mutual funds that are outperforming ETFs. And I thought this was important to bring this to you, this is from Investors Business Daily, and these are statistics through May 8th of 2018. But what I thought was important was to talk about how ETFs might be trading places with mutual funds. As you know, if you've been listening to the podcast over the years, I've been talking about how ETFs have been outperforming mutual funds, meaning they've been earning more. And a lot of times ETFs have that advantage because they have very small fees. So they have a lower hurdle to overcome to earn back the fees, if you will. So mutual funds have to do, you know, 1.8, 2% better than an ETF just to have the exact same performance. So it is more difficult for mutual funds to outperform ETFs. For those of you who aren't familiar with mutual funds, they are a pool of lots of different companies that are put together by a professional manager. And that professional manager can buy and sell companies in that fund, can change the portfolio as much as he or she wants. And for that professional management, they charge fees versus an ETF is a static portfolio. So index funds like the S&P 500 would be an example of an ETF. That always remains with the 500 largest companies in the US in its portfolio. So it doesn't change, therefore you're not paying for management fees. All right, so what am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to say that if you look at a one, three and five year performance number, we now have mutual funds starting to really outperform ETFs and this again, came from Investors Business Daily. These are US diversified stock funds with assets of $100 million or more. So they're getting rid of the very smallest funds and they're taking those that have capital of $100 million or more and comparing those. So I'm gonna just give you some examples of what's going on with mutual funds versus the S&P 500. Because year to date, the S&P is about flat. In fact, it's only up through May 8th of 0.55% year to date. And so it's interesting because we have large company growth mutual funds that are up 14.67 year to date or 15.1% year to date or 8.71, 9.64, 10.95, all kinds of performance that is significantly above what the S&P 500 has done year to date. However, it's dangerous to just look at a five month period and make any kind of a judgment. We really need to take a longer term view. So I'm not even going to highlight those companies that are doing well for the first five months of the year. Now I will post this chart on my website. So if you want to go to the podcast section at lindapjones.com, you can see the whole chart and it will show you what these funds did for 2017 year to date and then their three and five year average. But what I thought was really important was to talk about the five year number. And unfortunately it didn't go out any longer than that. So that's the longest, I have on this survey. But for five years, the S&P 500 was up an average of 12.66% per year, which is excellent. But we do have these mutual funds that have outperformed. Some of them have been performing over 20% per year for five years. And the very worst on this list has been up 18.53%. So a good six 
percentage points, or what we'd say 600 basis points, six percentage points, from 12.66 to 18.53, almost six percentage points better in these mutual funds than in the S&P 500, which would be equivalent to an ETF. So interesting numbers. We are starting to see that outperformance in some of these large growth funds. All of these are large cap growth funds, except for two, which are small cap growth, and one, which is mid cap growth. So everything is apples to apples. If it's large growth, then they're large companies. If they're mid cap, that means they're medium sized companies. And if they're small cap, that means they're smaller companies. So we really wanna be comparing apples to apples. So I'm gonna give you the large growth funds that have outperformed the S&P on a five year basis. So the number one fund was the Morgan Stanley Institutional Growth Fund, symbol MSEQX, and that was up 20.98% for five years. Next was the Fidelity Over the Counter or OTC Fund, symbol FOCPX, and that was up 20.77% for five years. The next large cap was the Transamerica Capital Growth A Share, symbol IALAX. It was up 20.35% for five years. Then we had the Morgan Stanley Multicap Growth B Share, CPOBX, and that was up 19.44% for five years. Next was the T. Rowe Price Institutional Large Cap Growth, TRLGX, up 18.81% the Edgewood Growth Institutional, EGFIX, up 18.6%, and the Fidelity Growth, symbol FDGRX, up 18.53%. Now there were some NASDAQ 100 indexes that I skipped because those would be equivalent to ETFs, and I'm wanting to highlight mutual funds. So managed portfolios that have outperformed ETFs. And again, these were all up 18.5% or better versus the S&P up 12.66% on a five-year basis. Something interesting to note, I'm not suggesting that you buy any of these. I'm simply calling to your attention when you're putting together your portfolio, you might wanna be mixing in some of these top performing mutual funds if you have access to them in your 401k, for example. You might wanna be mixing them in with some of your ETFs because if they are continuing to outperform on a one, three, and five year basis, then you will want to participate in some of that better performance. So I just wanted to bring those to your attention to let you know about them, to talk with the fact that maybe we've got some mutual fund managers coming back in and having some outperformance over ETFs. This could be starting a longer term trend, I don't know, something we're gonna be watching, but just wanted to make you aware of that. If you haven't yet hit the subscribe button, please hit subscribe so you'll be updated with all of my new podcasts as soon as they're published. I would be honored to have you subscribe to the show. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.